By blood we are bound. By betrayal we are divided. By revenge, I claim your life. If you like true revenge stories, you found the best place for your vengeful needs. Brothers are what best friends can never be. Linked by blood, a shared past, knowing you stand by each other through happiness and hardships. Unfortunately for some, all they know, is dealing with hardships concerning their evil brother. Some brothers, especially like in the last story, seem to be driven by an itch, that can only be relieved when making their siblings suffer. We start off with a revenge story, which shows there is no good deed that goes unpunished. A generous sister wants to share her inheritance fairly, but her half-sibling brothers want more, and threaten to sue her. Followed by a stubborn brother who forgot to pay his brain bill, and tries to make his brother's life unnecessarily difficult, by bluffing all the way into getting himself arrested. Most intense and tragic story for last, a brother in sheep's clothing seems to be a changed man, but he can only hide his dark intentions for so long. Before we dive in, be sure to replace the mayonnaise in the jar, with vanilla pudding, and eat it in front of the like button. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These revenge acts might be disturbing to snowflakes. I'm 25 years old now, my story is about my half-brothers. It started when my grandparents passed away when I was three. They set up a savings account in my name. The account was meant to be accessed by me when I was 21. At that point it contained just over 300k. My grandparents left me a letter saying they would like me to share the money fairly with any other Smith-Jones children, meaning my full siblings, dad's a Smith, mom's a Jones. By fairly, they meant that they wanted me to assess the situation and judge for myself what was fair. I never had full siblings, but I have two half-brothers, Mac and Joe Smith, who are dad and stepmom's kids. Due to the specific wording my grandparents used. I legally never had to give Mac or Joe any money. However, I see Mac and Joe as my brothers, and as the money came from our grandparents, I felt that the fairest thing would be to assign each of us 100k, so we all got an equal sized lump sum. I figured that when Mac, the youngest, turned 21 and took his 100k, we could split any remaining money. When I turned 21, my dad suggested I buy a house with my 100k. I found a place I loved, but it was 130k and I couldn't get a mortgage, so dad advised I could borrow 30k from the account. I did, figuring I could pay it back before my brothers turned 21, and I have been repaying it. The account should be at 208k right now, but due to me withdrawing and then repaying that money it's at 195k. So I still owe 13k. Joe turned 21 recently, and as I was giving him his 100k. Joe noticed that there was less in the account than there should be. I explained and said I was going to put it all back before Mac, now 19, turns 21. Joe told Mac and both boys said I stole from them and owe them the full 13k back plus 3 grand of interest that they felt they would have gotten, and they wanted it all paid by this summer. Which gave me less than 6 months to bring the account up to 211k. I said I'd do it, but over 2 years as planned. The boys then wrote up a contract to that effect. I went to sign it, until I saw that it said 6 months to pay it all back. I wouldn't sign as we agreed on 2 years. They said I should figure it out as they were entitled to that money and would be seeking legal advice. Later that day I got an email, clearly written by them, saying that they intend to sue me for the 16k, plus whatever is currently in the account, and additional damages and emotional distress on top of that. At this point in time, I'd given Joe about 50k of his 100k, because he wanted it in installments. I responded that legally, they were never entitled to any of it, and given their attitudes, I'd say they've already received an amount I deem fair so that 50k was all they were getting. I then got a barrage of texts, calls, and emails yelling at me for going back on our deal. I blocked them. They then took to social media, saying that I was trying to screw them out of their inheritance and rallying our extended family into harassing me over this, and it mostly worked as a lot of people messaged me. However, I got a message from this guy called Chris Smith. Chris said he was 27, and claimed to be my half-brother. I had never met him before, but he sent me photos of him as a kid with our dad, grandparents, and me. He showed me that he also had an account with 150k in it, and a copy of a letter from our grandparents. This copy saying this money was meant to be shared fairly among dad's illegitimate children. Chris also told me we have another half-sibling, who is 18. He'd been looking for me for a while, but only found me when dad shared Joe's post which had me tagged. We checked with a solicitor to make sure, and as the boys are legitimate, they aren't entitled to anything in Chris's illegitimate kid fund. 
And as they are my half siblings, they aren't entitled to anything in my Smith Jones kids fund, either. I sent the boys a letter formally telling them to back off, stop posting about me online, and enjoy the 50k, because it's all they're getting. The day they received the letter, Chris got a PM from dad, asking if the boys can have some of Chris's fund. Chris also said no, and told dad we'd met. I told Mac and Joe about Chris and our other half-sibling, with Chris's permission. So it looks like my grandparents, knowing about Chris before they passed, set up two funds. One for the kids dad had with my mother, who was still his wife when they passed, and one for children born out of dad's affairs, presumably to make sure no one tried to screw anyone else over out of hurt feelings. I'm getting a lot of doo-doo my way, but holding firm on my decision. The boys have realized that I won't back down on this and it sounds like I've caused a schism at their house, as Joe has all the money and no intention of sharing with Mac, so Mac is now feeling twice as screwed. Plus stepmom apparently did not know about the other half-siblings, or that my half-sister was born after she and dad got married, and she's made dad move into a hotel. It sounds like dad is looking for a long-term living arrangement outside of the family home, because it looks like she is not letting him move back in. Dad is begging me to reconsider, but honestly, I'm done with all of them except Chris and my sister. My uncle has always been a self-righteous, petty slimeball, with a foul temper and grandiose idea of his own importance but little to no brains. My dad always just took it and tried to keep the peace, because family is so important to him. It might have been extra important to him, because he was adopted. This is the story of how my uncle finally pushed my dad too far and ended up getting arrested for causing troubles. As background, my dad and my uncle are neighbors in a rural community of 600-ish people. My dad built the house my uncle lives in and sold it along with a small plot, so my dad's remaining land is about 6 acres and runs along the side and the back of my uncle's smaller property. My uncle is a dealer for HVAC units. My dad is in the HVAC business and would buy some things from his brother. Even though his brother's prices were higher and he had a more limited inventory than other dealers, he would choose his business in order to help him out. My dad also rented a building his brother owned and used it as his shop slash office. He only rented the building and parking lot, but in the field out behind the shop, my uncle and my dad both would collect old HVAC units. These things are rusty and all around fugly, but when they didn't have anything else to do they could go get one of these old units to break down for scrap. This story starts when one day my dad went to his brother and said he needed a certain unit, but his brother quoted him a really high price and also couldn't deliver in the time frame my dad needed. So my dad called up another dealer he works with and then that guy had a unit on hand to give him for a much lower price. A no-brainer. My uncle found out about this somehow. Dudes in the HVAC business are apparently like gossipy teenaged girls. He confronted my dad, basically giving him an ultimatum, that if my dad wouldn't commit to buying 100% of his units from my uncle, then my uncle wouldn't sell him anything. I already told you my uncle is a few fries short of a happy meal. So my dad didn't say anything to his brother, but he took him at his word and stopped buying anything from him. A month or so later my uncle showed up at my dad's shop and confronted him again, wanting to know why my dad hadn't ordered anything from him that month. When my dad told him why, my uncle exploded. They apparently had a screaming match, and in the end my uncle announced that my dad was no longer his brother. No longer his brother. They were no longer doing business together, and my dad was evicted from the shop. I will note that legally my dad was not evicted, because evicting him would have required a legal notice, a certain period of time, etc. But my dad was over it, so he complied and began converting the barn at his house into his new shop. So my uncle, who apparently had thought my dad would not call his bluff, showed back up at the shop a few days later and informed my dad that he also has to move all of the old HVAC units scattered around in the field behind the property, or he would sue my dad for the cost of removal. Now, this too probably had no legal power, since my dad's lease was only on the building, not the field, and my uncle contributed to and used the old units as communal property. But you have to know something about my dad. When my dad is pissed off, he is really pissed off. So he agreed to move the old units. He took his tractor over and loaded each one onto his flatbed trailer, drove out behind his barn, and painstakingly arranged hundreds of rust bucket fugly old HVAC units an inch or two off the property line, at the back of my uncle's house. Note that my dad could not see these things from his house due to the way his property is set up, but my uncle had a crystal clear view of them from his backyard. My uncle started being even more of a creep than usual and was always spying on my dad's house, so my dad decided to build a privacy fence down the side of his property, 
that runs along my uncle's property, but not the back of the property where the HVAC units are. The fence guys arrived and worked for a few hours before my uncle came screeching into his driveway and exploded out of his truck already screaming. Apparently these poor fence guys had laid posts or tools or whatever, temporarily on his side of the property line as they were building the fence. So my uncle called the police, who basically told the fence guys, okay dudes, just don't put anything on this crazy man's property and left. The next day someone left a hammer across the property line, so here comes my uncle screeching at them again. He called the police again, but by the time they got there the guy had already moved his hammer, so the police were just annoyed by this point, but could only warn them not to do it again. Later that afternoon, my uncle called the police a third time. I kid you not. This time he wanted to report that my dad had stolen a backhoe from him. Like one that attaches to the back of a tractor. One that, again I kid you not, my uncle had given to my dad two whole years prior, because my uncle didn't even have a tractor big enough to attach the thing to. The cop were not amused when this story came to light, and since it was the same cop who'd been there earlier that day, she became beyond annoyed at that point. My dad helpfully said, come get the backhoe if you want it, knowing full well my uncle had no way to pick the thing up or haul it, even the few feet to his own yard. My uncle replied that my dad was just trying to trap him and would say he was trespassing if my uncle came onto his land, even though the cop was standing right there when my dad offered in, by the way, this conversation was taking place on my dad's driveway. He then said that he wanted to file a complaint with the police, that basically amounts to a restraining order against my dad. It isn't a restraining order, because it isn't issued by a judge but the cops treat it that way, it's for habitual trespassers. Annoyed cop helpfully informed my dad that this would mean that even if my uncle texted or emailed him and invited him to come over to his house to discuss things, even if my dad had that written proof he'd been invited, if my uncle called the cops or even took a picture of my dad on his property, he could potentially get arrested for trespassing. My dad said he wanted to file one against his brother too. The revenge part of the story is now upon us. My dad knew full well that his brother had no real clue where the property lines were and was not going to dig up his survey to check. Let me repeat that my stubborn uncle has an IQ of 2, and it takes 3 to grunt. He only knew where the lines were, because my dad knows exactly where they are by maintaining wooden poles in the ground along his property lines. So when his brother was away for a few days, my dad moved all of the old HVAC units along the property line over further onto his own property by a few feet and moved the poles back the same distance. So basically it looked the same as it had before, except it looked like the property line was a few feet further back than it actually is. He then placed some random piece of scrap across the fake property line, still on his own property, but it looked like it was across the property line, if all you had to go by were the incorrectly placed poles. He set up a few game cameras aimed at the line, and waited. Sure enough, his brother who's missing a few buttons on his remote control, came storming out of his house as soon as he noticed this scrap on his side of the property line, crossed the real property line to get a good look at the scrap. And called the police. My dad was waiting for them with his survey showing where the actual property line is, a copy of the report annoyed cop had given him, and game camera footage of his brother clearly trespassing on his land. So the cops proceeded to approach my stubborn uncle, reading him his rights and arresting him. The only way his revenge could possibly have been any sweeter, would have been if it were annoyed cop who showed up at the scene and arrested my uncle. But alas he had to make do with someone he and his brother had both gone to high school with, which worked out since it was especially embarrassing for my uncle to be arrested by someone he knew well. And who could make sure everyone else in town knew. In the end, nothing really came of my uncle's arrest, or at least not that my dad has heard about. But it was probably enough for my uncle to get handcuffed, spend a night in jail, and have people know about it, because my uncle hasn't caused any more troubles for my dad, other than generally existing where my dad occasionally has to see his truck drive by. Now my uncle is in a business dispute with his wife's sister and his brother-in-law, so presumably he is trying to take his anger out on another target, who hasn't already beaten him. My stubborn uncle, aunt, cousin and my cousin's wife all unfriended me on social media, so I only know what's going on with them via small town gossip nowadays. My sister was driving down the road recently, saw my uncle in his yard, and waved at him. He turned away like he didn't know her. None of us got an announcement when my cousin's wife had her baby recently. So I think the end of the story is just that we are all dead to my uncle and his family, but he is too afraid to do anything besides pretend we all don't exist. This is my first and probably last post ever, but I need to get this off my chest. I couldn't talk about it before with anyone, but now I feel I can. 
Only the people who were involved in court know about this, but most of them are already deceased or have fallen ill. This happened 12 years ago. Before I start, I need to clarify some stuff since I'm from Germany. The school system we have is like this, elementary school is from 1st to 4th grade, followed by middle school and high school altogether from 5th to 13th grade. Which is then followed with college or university. Since I got into middle school I had a goal. I wanted to move to a foreign country and get a nice job there after studying something like business management. I set the bar very high, because I grew up in a family of drug addicts, dealers and abusive parents and brother. Because of this, I always put pressure on myself unintentionally. I got to middle school by the age of nine which was a year earlier than everyone, I got to school earlier since I could already read and write in kindergarten. By the age of 12 I had learned three new languages. English to an extent where I could easily talk to Americans and Brits, Japanese like a local elementary student and Spanish, so I could also kind of talk to Spanish people. Fast forward to 13th grade. My life was hell throughout school, since I got beatings at home for not being able to sell or cook narcotics and barely had any friends, because of my clothes that always had holes in them. Even though I was close to suicidal, I never gave up on my goal and had only A since 5th grade. I barely ever got B's. I had finished high school with achieving the best possible GPA score. I don't know how to convert USA score to Germany's though, so I'll leave it at that. After this, I went on to study business management and finishing university. At this point my parents had both died of an overdose and the only person I pretty much knew was my brother. Who was still in booty hole. I never really talked to him, I just knew that he had done something with sports in his career. Everything went like I always dreamed except for the foreign country part. When reaching 30, I had a wife and two kids, average income and all in all an average life. I never was really happy with that, because of the high expectations I had of myself. I tried to accept it, but I always felt like I threw my potential away. I fell into a deep depression when I was 33. My wife left me because of it and took the kids with her. And here I was again, alone, depressed, suicidal. The only person I knew and was comfortable with calling was my brother, who I hadn't seen for a few years. I thought he became a down-to-earth guy, because on the phone he genuinely sounded like he was trying to help me. I was in debt, so I sold my car and took a train to the town where he lived. When I finally got there, he still seemed like he was trying to be helpful. He even offered me money which I didn't want to accept. He then proceeded to take me to his house, which was surprisingly big. It was surprising to me, because it was so out of character for him. He never did anything for school nor working, he had always been in booty hole that was only focused on sports, spending time with friends doing narcotics. He showed me around, but the longer I stayed, the more I felt unsettled by how he could have achieved getting such a place. I couldn't get that question out of my head, so I just had to ask him. The proud answer I got was, with hard work of course. Hard work? He never did anything and I knew he hadn't done anything since I had last seen him. To confirm this, I asked his wife to which she said that he was just lucky. He had won the lottery. He won 2.7 million euros and did some lucky investments. A lazy, abusive piece of doo-doo had more money and a better life than me. I couldn't get over this, but since he was being nice and offered to let me stay at his place, I didn't mention it. After three months of staying at his place he gracefully offered me a place at his company. I didn't know anything about his company and about this line of work. Keep in mind that I was still depressed and desperate. I accepted the offer and he intentionally gave me a task that was extremely hard to complete. There were workers that had warned me about this dangerously difficult task, but I didn't listen. I didn't listen and tried to do my job assigned to me with good intentions. What could go wrong? I screwed up. I destroyed a machine that would cost around 150,000 euros to replace. I tried to explain to him that I couldn't give him the money because I was in debt. He didn't care about my situation and decided to force me to pay, by suing me. He sued me and won. My depression sucked me in a deep dark hole further and further. After a suicide attempt I got sent to a mental health clinic and I spent a little over a year there. My depression wasn't gone, but they decided that I wasn't a risk to myself anymore. I was 35 when I got out. The first person I saw when I got out was my brother, he was waiting in the entrance area. When walking towards him, the first words he said to me were, can't get a decent job, can't get the wife to stay and can't even kill yourself. What can you do? I was furious. I couldn't hold back and I punched him in the face as hard as I could. I broke his jaw and when he fell on the ground and he lost a tooth. Can you guess what happened again? Right, I got sued again. 
And he won, again. I couldn't pay for the medical bills, so I got a loan. I took responsibilities for my actions and focused on getting better. When I reached 38, I was doing a lot better. I had paid off the loan but was still in department I was relatively happy with life at this point, until the day everything was ruined again. My brother decided to pay me a visit. He greeted me with the words. You thought I would let you get off easily with just the medical bills? You probably didn't know that everything I did for you was a plan to make you end yourself. You were the reason mom and dad died. Excuse me? I was the reason? They were drug addicts and I didn't want to have anything to do with them, so I responded with something like. This will not end well if you don't leave me alone. You already ruined everything for me, isn't that enough? He told me that he would not leave me alone until I would end it all. He brought my kids up again, my wife and everything that had failed in my life. Trying to push me over the edge, trying for me to go and end it. He did achieve pushing me over the edge, I had lost it and started to beat him. I beat him non-stop for about 5 minutes, until I realized that I had done something terrible. He was laying in a pool of blood and I panicked. I called the cops on myself and a few weeks later the court decided what my punishment would be. Since I gave myself up to the cops my time got reduced from original 13 years to 10. They knew that I would probably be dangerous to myself in a cell alone. So they put me in a cell that was supervised 24-7. So I couldn't even try. These 10 years truly opened my eyes on my situation in life. I had been in selfish prick to my wife and kids. I always gave priority to my stupid career. I was the reason all of the bad things happened. I was the reason my wife left me and my life seemed worthless. As soon as I got out, I started to search for a job and even though I had been to prison, I found a job pretty fast. It has now been two years since I got out and I am the happiest I have ever been. I do not regret killing my brother one single bit. Not only did I help myself with it, but also his wife who got his money. It seemed I also got revenge for everyone he had oppressed and assaulted over the past few years. His wife seemed happy since he wasn't there anymore, because he was beating her constantly. I have a below average income but a loving girlfriend who knows I was in prison, but doesn't know the circumstances. I live in a small cozy apartment and I'm happy to live my new life. I finally made contact with my kids and ex-wife. Of course, we didn't just hit it off right away but we had some deep interesting conversations. I hope in the future our relationships will improve to a point where they don't hate me. Thank you for enjoying this episode, which was made with artificial love. Subscribe or give Royal AI some sugar by avenging the like button. Could you imagine doing one of these acts yourself? Share your experience below. I'll join the conversation.